Welcome back to the channel. We've got another unboxing review today. This has just turned up. So this is Ravel's 132nd Tiger Moth DH82A. So we're looking around the box. We're told it's 90 parts in total. We're given the dimensions to the model as well. This kit number is 03827. So nice box art on the front, um, commemorating 500 years of the Royal Mail. And looking around the box, we get the same artwork on the top and on the bottom and the sides. The only real difference is the rear of the box. So we get a nice image of the actual built-up model, which looks pretty good, apart from the uh, ejector pins. Anyway, you can see it's quite a substantial size of box, and you'll see why I've mentioned that in a moment. So it's Revel's usual way of doing things. It's a side opening box. Uh, they're not the best, unfortunately. So inside this cavernous box, we have a bag of sprues. And should be and the instructions and that is it so you can see the kit itself takes up very little rooms the usual uh, hell way of doing things put it in a box it's far too big oh. right so so starting off with the instruction sheet the usual modern day way of Ravel doing things uh, we get a nice colorful instruction sheet so image again of the actual model itself on the front cover uh, the usual way Ravel do things, we've got a breakdown of how to build a scale model. We've got a couple of different symbols we might need to pay attention to as we go through the build. Colour callouts are done by Revel Zone, so again you might need to refer back to your own paint manufacturer and you prefer to use. Sprue layouts themselves, so the breakdown, so it looks like we've got three individual uh, styrene sprues and a clear sprue. And we're starting off with the construction, so we've got to open up a few holes before we actually join the fuselage halves together. What they're wanting us to do here is rig this, so essentially thread the rigging through before joining that and uh, we've got to install the actual instrument panels we get separate decals for the actual instruments themselves which is a nice touch once we've done that we're putting the bulkheads in as well for the rigging again a few more holes to open up and once we've done all that we can join the fuselage halves together and set that aside to dry then we've got the tail section going on so both the horizontal and the vertical stabilizers being fitted as well which this has our integrated ski at the back then we've got the engine going together be interesting to see what kind of details we get on that. We'll look at that in a minute. And once we've built the engine section up, that's been fitted to the front bulkhead. We've got the top of the cowling coming on, uh, side, go uh, side doors going on. Don't give they don't show an option for having these open, but obviously wouldn't be too difficult to uh, to do that yourself. Uh, and obviously shows it on the box and the actual completed model. We've got the front of the cowling going on there, and the rest of the cowling uh, being fitted as well. I don't think it'd be too much hassle for you again to pose this open if you wanted to. Then we've got the sort of front combings, the fairings going on, the windscreen is being fitted as well. And then we've got the bottom wing going together. So again, we've got to open up a few of these holes before we install the actual control columns and the rudder pedals into that floor section itself. Then we've got the seats going together. Again, we've got decals or decals for the actual seat belts. And once we've done that, we've got this fuselage that we've built up being installed onto the actual bottom wing itself. And we're starting to build up the actual struts and the spars and getting them all into place. Then we've got, this is the top wing. Same thing again, we've got to open up a few of the holes for the rigging. And then we've got that top section being fitted to the bottom wing. We've got the fuel tank for the center, uh, center fuel tank being fitted as well. And then they give us a nice, we do get a rigging diagram. And then on this model, so the idea is they want us to rig it and then install the top of the, uh, the, top of the wing. I don't think I'll be doing that myself because I don't want to be gluing these together once they're painted. We'll still have a seam to deal with, so it's up to you guys how you want to build this. Uh, but interesting way of doing things. Anyway, we've got the bottom side of the wings going on. It's so the same thing as the top wing. These are basically built up a two, uh, two halves sandwiched together. And we're moving on. So again, a few more bits and pieces being fitted. We've got the, ele uh, the ailerons being fitted there as well. We've got the wheels going together. So it's two halves being fitted. And then the undercarriage being located in as well. A couple of more of the struts going in. Just the same thing again on the other side. The good thing is we do actually get uh, different views uh, of the actual gear going together. So again, it shouldn't be too, uh, too difficult to follow along how this uh, all goes together. And we've got the actuators for the uh, elevators themselves, uh, ailerons themselves. And we've got the strut for the actual horizontal stabiliser as well. A few more of the actuators for obviously the rigging to attach to. And we're pretty much there, so we've got the prop going on. A few more lumps and bumps, and again the sort of final bit of rigging uh, for the tail. And colour callouts, so again, done by Revel. So colour callouts we've got here, we've got obviously the box art, the celebrating 500 years of the uh, Royal Mail. 
K4259. So again, top view and side view, and then bottom view and the other side, which is nice to see. And the one that really took my eye, this is, if I'm going to build this, this is the version I'm going to do. So this is actually a Tiger Moth based in Switzerland in 2016. Uh, so certainly a bit more unusual, uh, rather than your traditional silver or yellow Tiger Moth. Um, so yeah, if I'm going to build this, this is definitely the colour scheme I'm going to go for. So you can see there, we obviously get the same thing as the last scheme. Uh, get a full 360 degree colour call out. So yeah, not too bad. Looks pretty good. Decals, decals, stickers, whatever you want to call them, transfers. Don't look too bad. Um, well, having said that, yeah, so uh, unfortunately on my roundels, so here, or rondels, roundels, what you want to call them, Maybe you can see that. There's just, on the top edge of between the white and the blue, there's a, a slight bit of red showing through. So I think that's the way they've laid this up. I don't know whether they've printed it in such a way they've actually put the red behind the white. Uh, but they've not quite lined this up. So that's affecting pretty much all of these roundels, which is a little bit of a shame. It's not that noticeable. Uh, I mean, I'm having to look. So now on to the sprues. So we're given if all the sprues are in a single bag. Now this tells me, and again, checking Scalemates. So if you don't know, go on to scalemates.com. It's a breakdown. It gives you every single listing of every single kit that was ever made, who made them, and who's and crucially, who's reboxed them. So for example, Ravel are a classic manufacturer of reboxing older tooling kits. Uh, and when I checked Scalemates, it wasn't very clear. Uh, but after opening the box, this is actually ICM's kit. So this was actually tooled in 2020, so it's, not, it's a quite a recent tooling. Uh, and ICM released a couple of boxings, and they're due to release more. Uh, so this is actually I, this is a good kit. I've already seen a review of the actual ICM kit, but uh, I think people need to know, uh, obviously, that Ravel have basically reboxed it. So they've taken the plastic sprues from ICM, uh, they've done their own instructions and their own decal sheet, and thrown it together in a <coughs> oversized box uh, out to you guys. So, well, basically, we'll start off. We'll have a look at these sprues. Uh, there's nothing on it saying that uh, it's from ICM, but you can tell by the, the way they've packaged it together. Uh, the only thing is, there's a couple of loose parts in these bags, so just be aware of that. So, yeah, just a couple of parts. So I've got a seat that's come loose, and another. That's the tail fillet. So a little bit of flash on there, but again, shouldn't be too bad to clean up. It's actually not flash, sorry, that's where it's come off the sprue. So yeah, no problems there. But again, check your bags, don't throw them away. So we'll start off with the main sort of sprue, I suppose. So obviously the interior, the fuselage itself, we've got ejector pins that are, I don't think they're going to be too much of a problem. Again, if you want to take care of them, it shouldn't take too much to sand them out. And we've got one of the seats here as well. Hopefully you can see that. Generally speaking, it's quite a clean sprue. Uh, ICM plastic, if you don't already know, is quite soft. So you can see that there. Uh, for example, this wing section uh, is quite flexible. But again, by the time we join these two halves together, it's not a problem. I've built ICM kits in the past and it's never an issue. The plastic is actually very nice to work with. It sands well and it rescribes well. So I'm not worried about that. But anyway, looking around on the exterior, we get some nice ribbing detail. Same on the fuselage as well, some nice raised details here, should pick it up quite well. Uh, beautifully formed tail and rear skid. Right the way through to the fuel tank as well, some nice crisp, I don't know if you can see that, but nice ridges on there. Uh, a little bit of flash around the front cowling, but again, a couple of swipes of a sanding stick, shouldn't be too bad. We've got that engine block here as well, that looks alright. And the other half, obviously the top of the wing. With that ribbing going through. So yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Then we've got the other halves of the wings. So we've got the lower wing here with the actual uh, cockpit section as well. And we've got the top of the actual fuel tank on the top of the wing. Which again is nice to see. And we do get some detail on the actual cockpit floor. So it's actually raised riveting on the bottom of this. That's quite nice to see. And then the last styrene sprue. Contains all the bits and pieces. You've got things like your wheels, uh, cockpit side doors, through the actuators and the prop. That undercarriage is quite nicely formed. That's really, really nice. Yeah, 
Nice details on that, really nice and crisp, same here again. No issues at all. Even the exhaust. That's quite nice, they've even got a hollowed out uh, exhaust tip on here. If you can see that on the camera. That's quite a nice touch. And the only thing that's... Okay. That looks to me as though it's the uh, the hood that goes in the rear uh, for when you're doing training. If you're flying at night. And you're training to uh, to get your night license. I've got the instrument panel here as well. Nice raised details. Same on the wheels. The wheels are really nice. Don't think you'll need to go down the aftermarket set of resin wheels for those. But this piece here, this is what I'm... T hang on, two seconds. Let me just have a... So what I'm on about is... No, maybe they don't. No, they do. Ah, right, okay. So what I'm on about here, guys, is this... Uh, these parts here look to be they have to be joined, which creates this hood. So it's a hood that goes on the rear, so that when you fly, and the Tiger Moth is flown from the rear, uh, the instructor can fly it from the front. So the idea was when cadets were being trained, the instructor would sit in the front of the aircraft, and then when they're doing their training for flying only on instruments, they would put this hood up, uh, which would obviously limit their view or completely uh, they would completely black it out. So again, it, they have to fly on the instruments. Uh, but it's quite interesting. We give obviously given the part, it's in the instructions, but I don't recall. Yeah, so we go from step 25, when we join the, we've got the fuselage and everything going together, and you know, no mention of this hood, onto step 32, and it just appears. So just be aware of that, you'll need to check the uh, the version you're doing, but it's nice that we get that option in the kit. So again, if you're doing one of the RAF training schemes or what have you, uh, and you want to fit that, they give you the part, and again, it's obviously pointed out all the way through the instructions, but not on the colour callouts. Just having a look to see. No, it's not on the final model either. I don't know whether maybe ICM have maybe got it as part of their instructions. Uh, but anyway, we're given that. And the last thing up, I'll just windscreens. Not a lot of glass on a tiger moth. Yeah, no real. Mm, little, no, it's alright. That was a bit of distortion in the side window. But again, the framing's quite nice. Should be too difficult to mask that up. So yeah, there you go. So that was uh, Ravel's 132nd DH82 Tiger Moth, which we've established. This is the ICM kit, so it's a 2020 tooling. As you've seen, it's really, really nice details on it. Uh, it's not a very extensive build. I mean, it's only 90 parts. I think the longest time is going to take you is uh, actually doing the rigging. But it should provide you with a really nice detailed model and quite a nice scale as well for this uh, twin-seater biplane. So if you guys want to see this getting built, mention it in the comments below. Um, once we get the Lancaster off the bench, I'm looking to move on to the next project. So this could be a contender. If you like the video, give us a like. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll get an update when I release new content onto YouTube. And until next time, guys, have a good one.